Greetings in the season of Eastertide. These Sundays between Easter and Pentecost where we have a chance to sink into this gift of new life that comes through the death and resurrection of Christ. As I share this message with you this morning, I hope that your pastor is getting a Sunday off. We all know what a challenging year this has been the pivots that have needed to happen for how we worship together. And I am grateful for each one of you and the congregations in the Cascadia District and the way that you have uh, pivoted in your life of ministry together, not just related to worship, but having study groups and prayer groups and continuing to reach out to your community in love and concern. The passage I would like to share with you today is from the Gospel of John chapter 10. It really is a hidden gem in a longer text about Jesus where he um, speaks about being the good shepherd. Hear these words from John 10. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. This time between Easter and Pentecost, as we have come to call it, is a time that in the lives of the disciples, they were trying to figure a lot of things out. What happened? What happened to Jesus? He died and now he's alive and appearing to us. It was a time that they struggled. It's a time that they had confusion. And it's a time that Jesus tried to remind them that I have come to give you life and to give it abundantly. Jesus did this through these post-resurrection um, post -resurrection appearances as we have read about them in the Gospels. A story where Jesus appears to the disciples in the upper rooms and says, Here, touch my hands, see my wounds, and know that it is me. Words to all the disciples, but especially to whom we have come to call Doubting Thomas. The story on the road to Damascus where Jesus becomes known to the disciples through the breaking of the bread. Jesus popping up one day on the beach and telling the disciples where to lay down their nets so they can get a good crop of fish in their nets. Back to that catch they remember back when Jesus first called them. And then Jesus cooking breakfast for them on the beach. And one of my favorite post-resurrection stories where Jesus asks Peter three times, do you love me? And Peter says, you know that I love you. Then tend my sheep. Do you love me? You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. We have this collection of stories where Jesus tries to remind the disciples that I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Jesus is trying to urge the disciples on saying, rise up. I have come, and I come again to bring you the gift of abundant life. Now, the disciples had their own challenges in receiving that message. They had their own troubles. They knew persecution was nipping at their heels, that whenever they would proclaim Christ, whenever they would speak of Jesus, that they were risking their very lives, and so they struggled. They struggled to not only make sense of this death and resurrection of Jesus, but they also struggled with how, would they, how they would embrace it and live it out. And so Jesus kept giving them reminders of the gift. The same kind of reminders that he gave them when he was living out his earthly ministry in their midst. During those times, we remember stories of Jesus offering words of forgiveness, of Jesus feeding people, of Jesus healing people emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Sometimes those 
stories of Jesus healing people were very dramatic. Jesus would be there with one who was lifeless and say words like, rise up and speak. Rise and pick up your mat and walk. Jesus was speaking to disciples who were confused, filled with fear, but also trying to embrace the gift of new life. And really, we're no different than those disciples. We also need reminded of the gift of life and life in abundance. We need reminded that Jesus urges us to rise up and embrace that gift. But there is much that gets in our way. We know that the COVID pandemic is improving and yet we know it's not over. We know it's too early to let down our guard, that masks and distancing is still important, that having getting our vaccine is important. It turns out I'm actually preaching this sermon that you're hearing in Easter tide on March 24th, even before Holy Week. And that means that I'm preaching it in the wake of two mass shootings, 10 people killed in Boulder, Colorado in a shopping supermarket, and eight people killed in Atlanta, Georgia, six of those being Asian women. We're reminded of our own pandemic of gun violence and mass shootings. And with those shootings, including those six Asian women, we're also then reminded of our pandemic related to racism in this country and the rise that has occurred in Asian hate crimes and discrimination. And it adds another layer to our complex racial problem we have with people who are black and brown, those who are uh, the first peoples who inhabited our country. So many layers of racism that get in the way of not just us embracing abundant life, but tells us and reminds us of the ways that we have kept others away from the gift of abundant life as well. Reverend Nadia Boltz Weber lifts up what gets in our way of abundant life in a writing titled God of Compassion, where she reflects on the story of the raising of the widow's son in the town of Nan. And I'd like to share an excerpt from that writing that she does. She says, reach out and raise us, God of compassion. Touch us as you did the wood on which the widow's son lay and speak those same words to us. Young man, arise. Little girl, get up. To we who think we are not worthy to be loved and medicate ourselves with food and booze and shopping, say, rise up. To we who have been hurt by those who say, who say they follow you, say, rise up. To those who feel unworthy of forgiveness, say, rise up. To the one who care for the least of these and feel too burned out to keep going, say, rise up. To we who are holding on to resentments like a security blanket, say, rise up. To those who hide their failings behind their good works, say, rise up. To the unloved child who has no idea that one day they will change the world, say, rise up. Are we willing to hear those words, rise up? Are we willing to move beyond that which gets in our way of the gift of abundant life? And, and then the second part of that question for me is, are we not only willing to embrace that gift for ourselves, but are we willing to say that is a gift that needs to be 
available to all people and what do I do that stands in the way of somebody else experiencing the fullness of abundant life? How have I caused hurt or pain in the life of another? What do I need to do to seek forgiveness, to offer reconciliation, to make amends that others will also know the gift of abundant life? Rise up. It's a message for us. It's a message for all of God's people. Now, there is a favorite singer-songwriter of mine that has written on the theme of rising up. It's Bruce Springsteen, and there have been many Easter's I have turned to his words. He has two songs that speak to this, and the first is My City of Ruin, a song he wrote after the devastating events of 9-11. And in that song, he encourages people to, to rise up in the midst of a city that has been in ruin. And he goes into this wonderful litany where he answers that question about how do we rise up? How do we do it? And he says, now with these hands, with these hands, I pray, Lord, with these hands, I pray for the strength, Lord. With these hands, I pray for the faith, Lord. With these hands, I pray for your love, Lord. With these hands, I pray for the strength. With these hands, I pray for your love. I pray for the strength. And as he builds up in the singing of that, he then moves into his chorus. Come on, rise up, rise up. Come on, rise up. We're reminded that we rise up with our prayers, with our faith, with the strength of our hands. And that these hands are not simply for praying, but that as important as they are, they're also that source of strength that we may get to the work of rebuilding our cities of ruin, that we can get to the work of repairing the damage and healing the wounds and bringing that gift of abundant life to others. I said there were two songs. The second is called The Rising. It too was written at a similar time after 9-11. And here Bruce takes us back to the garden the Garden of Gethsemane, the garden where Mary visits to visit that tomb one more time. And he writes this, I see you, Mary, in the garden, in the garden of a thousand sighs. There's holy pictures of our children dancing in a sky filled with light. May I feel your arms around me. May I feel your blood mix with mine. A dream comes to me like a catfish dancing on the end of my line. And then he has a way of naming everything that's in that sky, both the struggles and the turmoil, but also the signs of hope. Sky of love, sky of tears, sky of glory and sadness, sky of mercy, sky of fear, a dream of life begins to echo, sky of memory and shadow, a dream of life. Your burning wind fills my arms tonight, song of longing and emptiness, a dream of life. Sky of fullness, sky of blessed life. Come on up for the rising. Come on up, lay your hands in mine. Come on up. For the rising. Oh, that is the gift that is out there. That is the gift that Jesus is bringing to the disciples when he appears to them. It is the gift that Jesus brings to us when he says those simple words, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. That gift of life that is for us that gift of life that we 
need to empower others to have as well, that we need to walk beside others so that they can embrace the gift of life for themselves. Nadia Boltz Weber goes on and says, and when again, God of compassion, you have raised the dead. When again, you have made whole that which is broken. When again, you have reached into the graves, we dig ourselves and loved us back to life. Don't stop there. Do we dare to say to God, don't stop there. Rise us up and then enable us to grow, to become better disciples, to love deeper, to repent more fervently, to offer reparations, to offer amends, to work for reconciliation so that all people can know abundant life, so that all people can find the strength within themselves to rise up, to rise up, and embrace the gift of love and grace that comes from the death, that comes from the resurrection of Christ. Christ, who says, I came to give you life and to give it abundantly. Thanks be to God for that gift. Amen. Oh, 